The American Medical Association isn't quite ready to support a single-payer version of Medicare for All, but the organization says it is keeping an open mind as more and more 2020 candidates make their platform a part of their campaign. But how is corporate America preparing for the future of Medicare? Joining us with some insight is Dr. Jerry Penso, President and Chief Executive of AMGA, a healthcare advocacy group. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. Great to be here, Sagar. So doctor, tell me, your, your group puts a lot of emphasis on fighting for greater transparency in healthcare data. Tell me about how d the data show in Medicare is faring, how it's changing, and what needs to be done to, su to sustain it. To sustain Medicare data sharing, what we need is new rules that mandate that the data that's right now in the insurance companies is available to the provider groups, the medical groups in the health system that actually take care of the patients. And the reason being is if you're gonna take care of a patient, you need to know everything that's happened to them, whether by your doctors or outside that outside your system. Okay, so your group recently put, uh, put behind legislation that aimed at forcing the release of Medicare claims data. Why is this important to you? And how much of the public release of this data will help policymaker providers and the consumers? Yeah, so let's talk first about the providers. Mm -hmm. The providers are the ones that are taking care of you and me and our and our families and our communities. And in order to take care of them, they need to know everything about you. It's called population health. It's basically understanding all the conditions that you have and using that information to take better care of you in a proactive way. Without that data, um, you just can't manage a population. You don't know who has diabetes or heart failure and who's gonna end up in the hospital so that you can do prevention. Okay. So for the providers, this information is critical and we don't have it. Our medical groups and health systems, we surveyed them and we said, what's keeping you from improving healthcare and moving to value, which is better care at lower cost. Number one on their list, four years in a row, is we don't have access to the claims data that the insurance companies have. Okay. Well, what about the policymaker providers? Yeah, so yeah. we need that information as well to design better care systems. Mm -hmm. We need that data by we, meaning everyone who's in the healthcare system, in order to better understand how we're, how we're performing, what's happening with quality, what's happening with cost, what's working, what's not. Innovation is another big emphasis for AMGA. What are the most exciting innovations and innovators in the healthcare space right now? How could their work change the face of Medicare over the next decade? You and I were just talking offset about the blockchain. So t what are some other technologies that, that you're looking at? Yeah, our provider groups are really at the forefront of integrating new technologies like apps, remote monitoring, telemedicine uh, into, their, into their care plans for their patients. Mm -hmm. Oshner Healthcare in Louisiana has a great program called the O-Bar. So you know how you go into Apple Store and you go to the Genius Bar? When well, Oshner, your doctor prescribes an app, maybe it's for diabetes or hypertension or for exercise. These have all been pre-reviewed by Oshner. You go to the O-Bar, there's a technology expert who actually helps you put on your phone or your iPad, teaches you how to use it, and that's all connected to your physician. Hmm. So the physician can take better care of you. They actually have results now that show that patients who do this with their doctor, with the OBAR, are getting better blood pressure results and better diabetes results. Oh, that's fascinating. How can the ubiquitous internet signals, data collectors, and 5G revolution change healthcare in general and Medicare specifically? Yeah, so 5G is really exciting because what we need is that data interconnectivity between especially the provider groups and the patients. Mm -hmm. um, right now we have 4G, so there is some good connectivity, especially in urban areas. But in rural areas, those are mostly hooked up by satellite. So there's much more of a delay. And if you want to do telemedicine, so if you want to call up your doctor on the phone or on the uh, iPad, uh, or if you want to have remote monitoring where they put sensors in your home to check how you're doing with diabetes or heart failure. All of that will get so much better with uh, 5G. Well, one of the data points your group tracks is the relationship between medical providers and their actual workforce. How is the dynamic changing and what might it mean for the future of large healthcare programs like Medicare and Medicaid? Yeah, the future is what we call coordinated team-based care. And that means a group of physicians, primary care specialists, as well as other allied health professionals. That means nurses, pharmacists, health coaches, behavioral health people, all working together around a patient shared care plan. So that's the future. Everyone in that situation has a role to play. 
But what's most important is that there's an organizing system. Basically, how do we make that team as effective for possible for the Medicare patient? And I'll tell you why it's important. More and more Medicare patients have chronic conditions. It's now thought that about 70 to 80 percent of Medicare patients have one or more chronic condition. An amazing 14 to 15 percent have four or more. Those are conditions that aren't just, hey, you come into the doctor, fix me, send me home. They need ongoing monitoring, coaching, motivation, monitoring and tracking of how they're doing. That requires a team, not just you and one individual physician. Final question for you, doctor. What are the biggest challenges and opportunities in the Medicare space in the next few years? Yeah, I, I think the opportunities, as I mentioned, number one, how do we incentivize and organize around team-based coordinated care? I think the other opportunity is how do we move from reactive care, hey, just you come in with a problem and I'll take care of you, to proactive care, where we're actually figuring out how to keep you healthy, how to keep you out of the hospital, how to keep you out of the emergency room. Thank you so much for joining me, doctor. It's really interesting. Well, thank you, Sog. Appreciate it. We'll have more rising for you after this.